Ladies and gentlemen, I just did a video talking about um, OpenChat GPT or OpenAI being on steroids. And I was showing people about putting together a motion. What you may not understand is perplexly.ai. I did show that on the video, but I want to show you something. We're going to ask a question about foreclosure. A promissory note is collateral security for a loan under the Federal Reserve Act, comma, and when tendered by the borrower, it operates as satisfaction and accord, exclamation mark. Now, the thing which you need to know is perplexity is going to give me facts. It's going to give me the exact statement. It's not going to give me what it thinks. It's going to tell me what the facts are. And then it's going to base that upon, pay attention, actual websites that actually state these facts. Now, the reason why we're going to use perplexity.com to fill in our motion, to complete our motions, and if we have a question, we're going to ask perplexity.com, and we're going to put the exact factual answer in our motions because we want to deal with facts and conclusions of law. That way we don't have to deal with presumptions. The courts operate on presumptions. You kill presumptions by asking the court to take judicial notice of the facts. Now, the courts want to get technical. They'll say stupid things like, well, that depends. No, we are not thinking about deepening anything. Okay, if you need some depends, then you don't need to be sitting on a bench. I apologize. Those of y'all who don't know what depends are, go look up what are depends and do judges need them. Okay, now, be that as it may. Ladies and gentlemen, because we get the facts, if we want more details, TikTok, come on. We take this whole statement and we get rid of the links. And then we can go to a particular link that provides us more details and we can take parts of that and include in our document. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? And then we can use the software. There's a, an add-on that you can get with ChatGPT. And I don't know which one it is. I'm sorry. I forgot. It's the writer one. Give me, Give me a second. Okay, it's a writer, 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 writer. Where are you? Oh, Hyper Writer. It's an extension. Hyper Writer. You can put stuff in there and it does that. This is Google Voice. Google Voice ain't getting an answer right now, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, sorry. Uh, I got less than 10 minutes and it's a mandatory shutdown time. I literally have to walk away from all of this. Mandatory. So you can use Hyper Writer to rewrite what you're doing. Okay, just don't put the whole case in there because it will break it down. Look at that. Up and down, it breaks it. it, it, it no, just do the paragraphs. Have it reworded. Okay? I just, I'm doing this real quick because I want to show you guys that, yes, it is possible for you to do your whole, pay attention, your whole motion just using the framework of the motion, putting in your subject matter. Let's say... I shouldn't have done that, but we're going to do this right here. We're going to start anew. A petition for wrongful foreclosure, comma, what must be included? Question mark. Stop listening. Stop listening. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I asked what must be included. And so what it's going to give me is what needs to be included in a petition for wrongful foreclosure. So I take all of these things that are inclusive, and then I put them in my motion. Those are my bullet points. But I show not that they must be included, but that I've included these things. See, facts to demonstrate that the lender failed to adhere to the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, as well as documents that support blah, 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 blah. I don't have to do all of that, but I can do that. Okay? How you do that there. Okay? Now I can put together my motion by now taking each one of these statements, like this one right here. Petition for wrongful enclosure must include facts that demonstrate that they failed to follow the Fair Debt Collection Procedures Act. Watch this. How to T R O V E. Uh oh. That.
we're going to change that and we're going to change it to n. Okay. And we're going to let it answer. See, how to prove in a prediction for home foreclosure that the lender failed to do this. Okay. Evidence failure to click violation of the petition for wrongful foreclosure could include failure to disclose or provide verification of the debt when the borrower requested it in writing, as well as threats, harassments, and abuse. Additionally, knowledge of the rules, regulations, and laws governing blah, blah. This is for Texas. But you get rid of the Texas part and you put the general stuff. And you put the fact that they fair to verify. So, copy. And this is the copy. This is the definition of verification. But remember, Fair Debt Collections Procedures Act is a legal document written in legalese. So we do legal, T E R M. Got to hurry up because, like I said, 2.30, I got to shut down. No more this work until my meeting tonight. Okay. The legal terminology for verification of debt under the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act is verification of debts. It includes providing the customer with information about the debt within a certain day's initial debt, blah, 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 blah. That's not enough. I didn't ask about, oh, because it keeps it. That's what perplexity does. Perplexity keeps you in the same conversation. Okay. Perplexity keeps you in the same conversation. So now uh, let's do that same question that I just did right here. No, not that question. That's the wrong verification of debt legal terminology. See, because it understands the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act is a legal document, but now I got to create a new stream. Why? Because it will keep it along the same question and along the same thought pattern that I put in there before. So by creating a new stream, I get the answer specific to this question. Okay? Verification is a declaration made under oath or in the presence of a notary public that the statements made in a document are true. No debt collector will provide you anything signed under oath because it's all presumption. But you must highlight that when Congress wrote the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, they wrote it in legal terminology. Wake up. Wake up. When Congress wrote the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, they wrote it in legal terminology and not in plain English. Now. The Fair Debt Collections Practices Act was signed into law by President Jimmy Carter. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy! And it was introduced in the House under this bill by Frank, whatever his name is, and passed in the House on this date and codified, blah, 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 and prohibits certain debt. That's not what I asked for. I said, was it written in legal terminology? That's the conversation, you ignorant mother. Okay. I did the same thing. Okay. Okay, watch this. We're going to go up. Copy. Now, I got to go talk to the idiot. So y'all give me a second, okay? Because he and I got to talk. I don't want to talk to him because he's stupid. <sighs> Hold on. Yes, he is stupid. And yes, he is an idiot. He doesn't like me because I keep calling him an idiot. But he is an idiot. And he's a stupid idiot. Stupid is what stupid idiots do. Okay, we get rid of you. Then we get rid of that. Then we get rid of that. Then we get rid of that. Because perplexity, perplexity.com uses ChatGPT. And so we got to get rid of that. Oh, you know what? It didn't include my other stuff. Okay, we'll just use this for now. Okay, and now I'll go I gotta go get the other stuff. But let's see what it gives me about verification of debt. See, he he likes to be stupid. Oh, that's why. Okay. Whew. What happens is I'm using the internet, and that's the problem when I use the internet. It can't handle long questions when you're doing the internet. So can't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You you you'll confuse it. It's stupid, I told you. Y'all got to pay attention. It is stupid. 
And so it, it won't even let me re-ask the question the way I want to re-ask the question. So I got to do it that way. And then I got to go all the way to the bottom and I got to do that just to get it to answer my question. Uh-oh. Now I really don't want to answer. Come on now. Don't be playing with me. I ain't got time. This is, we're going to do this and then I'm going to have to copy the question if it does that again. But verification is a declaration made under oath. Okay. It gives us that. And then I got to go back here and give me a second. We're going to do that. Copy. Oh, I got to get the V. I, I could have wrote the V later, but copy. And then we're going to refresh. Refresh. Rewind. Hold on a second, y'all. TikTok. Now, again, the reason why we do this live so that you guys can see exactly what happened. Many times you guys are watching videos of people on YouTube and what they're doing. You can't see what they were doing in between. You can't follow the line of thought. So it is kind of disingenuous if you are trying to learn a procedure or a pattern. OK, so we're doing a pattern. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to freeze up again because it's taking this long. Because he doesn't like the question. He sees where we're headed. He's, he hears the conversation. Ah, verification. Yes, you are correct. Okay, thank you, you moron. All right, so we take that one and we do this right here. Copy. Now, he's going to give me the, the regular storyline, the same little line that the court would give. Watch. He's not going to say you're correct again. Uh-oh. Ooh, wait, did y'all see that? Y'all see how he do? Because that's what he do. He be like, wait a minute, y'all, you can't do that to me. You trying to set me up. And he doesn't appreciate it. See, that's what he do. Because he's stupid. Told you he was stupid. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I really do have to shut down. So I'm going to try to refresh this. I have less than a minute before I have to turn the computer off. So I get to upload the video and that's it. And that's literally, that's it. I don't get to do anything else. So we're going to go back here. And then we're going to put in this right here. And we're going to hit enter. You are correct. The Fair Debt to Lexus Practice Society is a written, written in legal language, which is often more complex and technical than English. This is because the laws and regulations often need to be precise, specific in their language in order to be effective and enforceable. The use of legal terminology is intended to reduce ambiguity and to provide for clarity of those who are subject to the law. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you're talking about verification, you have to bring up the fact that this was written in legalese. It was not written in English. So we can't use the English definition for verification. We must use the legal definition for verification. Got to go. You all take care. But I just wanted to bring this to you, how you will produce your own motion. Compare this video with the previous video done earlier this day, just before this one, and you will have it all. Got to go. Take care of yourselves. Adios. Arrivederci. Sayonara. I am gone. I am out of here. 5,000, 9,000, 20,000, whatever thousand Audis you got. Hey, it's gone.